So now that we have an e-discovery case created, let's talk about conducting a search with in that case. Now, I'm inside a specific case, so I'm going to create a search for that case. And let's give it a very generic name. And then I can set a description for it. I'm going to go ahead and click Create to create the search. And again, give it a descriptive name because you may want to rerun these searches or copy searches, modify it. There's a couple of different things you might end up wanting to do with them. So make sure we give them names that make logical sense. Okay, this will take a moment for it to create the search. And, oh shoot, it says I already have one by that name. So let me call it test two. That'll work. I deleted one that earlier that hasn't been deleted yet. Okay, so our search is going to take the form of a query, and this is a, actually a fairly powerful search function. As it comes up, you know, it's going to take it a second to load this. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and then we'll pick it up once it finishes this process of creating the search for me. Oh, there you go. Just as I get done, it pops up. Go figure. Okay, so this is divided into two pieces, so data sources and the condition builder. So let's start with data sources. So I can add a source or I can add a tenant-wide source. Now adding a source is going to let me choose specific people, specific groups, things like that. So I can choose Harry Potter, or not Harry Potter, Samwise GMG. Frodo Baggins, and Bilbo Baggins. So I can do it that way and choose specific people. The other thing I can do is I can go to Add Tenant-Wide Sources, and I can say do it for everything. Now, this is going to kind of depend on the limits of e-discovery for the case. So if the legal proceeding is organizational-wide, then you probably want to do it this way. If it only names... A few people, then you might want to do it the other way. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, organizational wide one, and so I can choose for all people and groups, mailboxes, sites. Yep, I want it all, so I'm going to click Save. That gives me my data source, and the rest of it is going to be on con uh, on specific conditions. So I want to look for a keyword or condition. Let's call this. We're looking for anything related to the Shire. Then I can add conditions as well. So this can get pretty cool. I can do it by date, by subject, by title, by specific participants, by specific types. Or I can use the key QL, uh, which is a query language. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this the way it is. And then I can choose to run the query. Now, uh, what do I want? So when it gets done, I can do the uh, look at statistics, and then I include can include a keywords query report or partially indexed items. I'm not going to leave it that way. I'm going to click on Run Query. This will take it a little bit, so here I am going to go ahead and pause the video, and I'll pick it up once my query is done running. Okay, so it only took a minute and a half or so. Of course, I have no data for it to actually search through, so more data is obviously going to take a longer search. So it comes back, and here's our statistics. We didn't find anything. We searched data sources. We searched or one data source, 21 locations. And then it would give us all of this other information if it had actually managed to find anything. Now, in this case, because I have an empty tenant and don't really have any messages or sites are very much for it to look at at all, obviously it didn't come up with a whole lot. But that is how you would create a search for a Microsoft 365 e-discovery case.